For those who don't know, I work remotely at my parents' home and have two to four meetings online every single day. Wi-Fi connection matters. And recently, although my download and upload speeds have been fast, sometimes there will be a weird 3-5 to five second blip that occurs randomly where I'll suddenly lose internet connection. This makes sense because I work upstairs in my room and the router is downstairs in my parents' office. So to solve this problem I'm having, I bought the AC750 mesh Wi-Fi range extender. And in this video, we're going to see how much my internet actually improves. Before we discuss what the results of the TP mesh Wi-Fi can do for us, let's actually learn how to install it. So this is what comes in the box. You have the TP-Link extender itself. It just plugs into an outlet and that's about it. There's also an instruction manual, but you don't need that with this video. So the very first thing that you'll need to do is download this TP-Link Tether app. It was initially called just Tether, but now they renamed it to TP-Link Tether. I will leave the link in the description below for both the Apple Store and the Google Store to make sure you're downloading the right app. So this is the first thing you'll see when you first download the app. So you'll have to press OK to accept local permissions network. If you don't, you'll have to find it manually within your settings. As you can see, I was a bit confused because even though I accept my local permissions, that splash page was still showing on the app itself. Even though you accept permissions, that splash page does not get removed. Unless you click, I've already given my local permissions. Once you do that, then you're asked to create an account and a password. So I just use my email and choose a password of your liking. You will have to validate your account after you sign up. So just check your email and it'll bring you to this registration page that just confirms that you have been activated. Going back to the Tether application, then you'll just click activated and log in, and then you are brought to the home screen. This is where you will add your extender to your network and we'll be able to configure the settings for that. This annoying splash page will appear once again, but just click but I've already given my local network permission and the page will go away. So when you come to this screen, you will choose range selector. And once you do that, you'll be given instructions to plug in the extender into a power outlet and then just wait until the LED turns solid. Here I am plugging the TP link into the nearest outlet. And as you can see, here is where my router is at. So it's really nearby. You need to make sure to do this to get the strongest connection. It takes a little bit until the lights become solid. So just make sure to be patient and wait. Now that the power LED is on, click OK and let's go to the next menu. At this point, your phone will start to search for the extender and it'll take some time to do so. Once it gets found, it will log in and will ask you for its own personal password for this extender device, not your Wi-Fi device you're going to connect to later, this personal device. Enter and confirm your password and then press OK. At this point, your extender will try to find all the nearby wireless networks that it can connect to. So the extender can connect to a 2.4 gigahertz network as well as a 5 gigahertz network. So make sure you're connecting the right router to the right frequency. Right now, I'm entering the password for my 2.4 gigahertz connection. You will do the same for your respective router. And once your password is entered, you're going to do the same for your 5G network. Depending on which router you have, you may or may not have to enter a different password than, than the router for your 2.4 gigahertz connection. I would say that for 80% of you guys, it's most likely the same password, but don't take my word for it. Once you're done, you'll review your passwords to make sure they're okay, and then you will confirm your extender settings. Once you're done, the extender will apply your settings, and this will take at least three to five minutes. Once that is done, you can unplug your router and place it to where you think your Wi-Fi dead zones are. And so this is the fun part where you get a trial and error, which gives you the best connection. Here you can see once I plug in the extender, the light will blink, the, the power will turn solid, and then it will find the different connections for the Wi-Fi. Your best friends, I mean, I, I knew everything about this girl. I knew her favorite color. I knew her 
now that you set up the extender you will actually change the network to your extender instead of using your original router and that's about it you are all set up and ready to go so now for the moment of truth, here is what the extender got me in terms of performance. So before we get into what download speeds and upload speeds I had while connected to the extender, let's first start off at the baseline of, of me just being connected to my regular router. As you can see, my download and upload speeds were pretty damn good. Again, the only reason why I got the extender was to decrease the number of lag spikes that I was getting. So let's see the results of the extender. When I connected to the extender, I tried three different outlets around my room and here were the results of the first one. So these were the results of the first outlet I tried. When I first saw these results, I was kind of shocked. I was like, what am I looking at because the results especially the upload speed was were that dismal it was crazy to me honestly i was a bit confused at first because on the box itself it says it can handle 433 megabits per second at 5 gigahertz which i was connected to so i was quite baffled and so that's why i chose two different locations and here are the results of those in this test i actually plugged the extender in my bathroom which is the room right next to mine and here are the results of those surprisingly the download speed was actually pretty good i was quite surprised i was getting those numbers over the first test but then when i looked at the upload speed i was like this is not gonna work i also tested stability just by playing a couple games and i was just lagging like crazy so the whole reason why i got the extender in the first place was meaningless because the stability was so trash here is the third and final test and as soon as i saw the first download results i knew it was doomed Here's also the upload speed, but what's the point? So let me just show you the final results. So that was my experience with the AC750 Wi-Fi range extender. Obviously the results speak for themselves. I will be returning this product, but the fact that my download speed was three times slower than my baseline and my upload speed was about nine times slower is crazy. This costs about $30 and I think you might be better just upgrading your router to a better router. Let me know what you guys think if you had a similar experience or I am just the crazy one out here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. I appreciate it so much. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.